We personally welcome you to the Franklin Hall Healing Meetings being brought to you from the beautiful land of the sun, Phoenix, Arizona. This broadcast originates at the lovely International Healing Cathedral. We are pleased to present to you the ministry of full and complete salvation. And now we introduce to you Brother Franklin Hall. Greetings everyone, and this is Brother Franklin Hall, author of many books on fasting, faith, divine healing, and the full and complete baptism with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We're bringing you a special, deeper divine healing ministry. We hope that as you continue to listen to these programs, you'll never be the same. We're showing you in the service following how you can live above sickness, get the Adamic root power burnt out from your body, get your body saved from the root Adamic root sickness and never be sick again. We will be bringing you wonderful testimonies how people are living many years without ever going back to the prayer line, never getting sick anymore, never getting tired anymore, and not having any more headaches. Isn't that wonderful? And we are bringing blessings that you will greatly appreciate. So tell your friends, get on the telephone, tell them to listen in, tune in to this wonderful broadcast. And now we bring you on into this wonderful service. One, two.
Because of your unbelief is authored by Brother Franklin Hall. Jesus told the disciples the reason why they were powerless. He explained in Matthew, the 17th chapter, the 20 and 21st verses, that some sicknesses cannot come out except by prayer and fasting. Because of your unbelief is a volume dealing with fasting and the greater faith ministry. Special menus for use in breaking fast of any length are included in this volume. You will be thrilled and challenged as you read and study the volume because of your unbelief. Our mailing address is the Franklin Hall Healing Ministries, Post Office Box 9910, Phoenix, Arizona, 85068. It's, it says that we're going to be a peculiar treasure unto the Lord. You see? A peculiar treasure. Anything that's peculiar is out of the ordinary, isn't it? That don't mean peculiar up here. No, you're just different than other people. The Bible says, you'll be a special people unto me. You are peculiar people. That means different than the people of the world. So we are a special treasure unto the Lord, and he's refining us and bringing us into this now so that we can be hid from the time of trouble. And one place I was reading yesterday in the Word of God, it says, who will hear for the time to come? Who will stand in the hedge and make up the gap? The Lord looked for a person, he couldn't find them. But today, he's bringing a people that's going to stand in there, just like Moses did when God said, I'm going to destroy the whole human race. Why, Moses got in the way and said, if you're going to blot them, you'll have to blot me first. Now, we've got a people that are coming forth that are going to have the vision for the people and the burden to get them clothed with body felt salvation, regardless of the cost, regardless of what it costs them. And it'll cost you everything you own. Somebody says the gospel's free. Certainly it is. But anything that's free, somebody paid the price. Don't you kid yourself. Somebody paid the price that it might be given. And it's going to cost you everything that you are to get what Jesus has. I like to say it this way. Lord, and you can look up right now. Those of you that are watching. I know there's people that are watching. And there's a lady especially that's sitting in a chair. That's your heart's almost pounding out of your chest. Because this is just what you've been looking for. This is just what you've been searching for. And you're watching today. And I declare unto you that God is doing a new thing through you. That your life will change. You will never be the same. You're coming off of that chair right now. And I doubt very little you'll be able to sit there very much longer. Because this is what you have been knowing. That there is a people that will come forth with a ministry like this. Today, sister, this is yours. Because he's coming upon all that we are that we might come into all that he is. Isn't that wonderful? That we might come into all that he is, and God is a consuming fire. That's why the Lord said, it's necessary that I return back to the Father, and he got back in the Father as he was before the foundation of the world. That's what it says. And so he had come out of that glory and that's why Jesus while on earth could get tired, weary and all that. But now he has returned to send this down in a far greater way that we have wonderfully, wonderfully accepted the message that the Lord is giving to the church today. He that hath ear. You go to the book of Revelation. See where God dealt with the seven churches. That's the church system of today. See what he said to the overcomers. Out of all those that overcome, he's going to do. He'll grant you a new name in a white stone and write, it in a, write a new name. He's going to grant you to eat of the tree of life. He'll grant you to sit with me and my Father in my throne. And all these things to the overcomer, the right to eat of the tree of life. And so all of these things were to the overcomers. And they had to come out. And in all those seven churches, there was something the Lord pointed at each one of them because he wasn't pleased. There was one, he said, I find no fault. But out of that will come this eighth group. And there's a whole message in that. That eighth church that's being formed. So this is the Lord bringing us out where we have been to go in Jesus, never to go out anymore. That ark, the body, that uh, the body of Christ representing the ark, 
Back in Noah's time, Noah had to get in that ark. The door being in the side was where Jesus' side was pierced. We know that. But the ark was a covering to his entire body. And it preserved him right through the storm. God did not translate him out of the storm. He caused him to ride right through the storm. And that goes right back to that song for many years ago. With Christ in my vessel and on my vessel I can smile at the storm. Come on, you folks that live in the area where the tornadoes and the hurricanes and the twisters and all of that devilish wind that can get going. I never was in but one in my life, and that was in uh, Lawton, Oklahoma. And the uh, brother and sister that was with us there at that time, Brother Hall, was raised in that area, so he knew what they were like. But I had never heard or even seen a tornado. And... Uh, I said, well, if one came, I'd crawl back under the bed. I think that'd be the safest place to be. Then nothing would fall on you. Never thinking that the whole house could be lifted up and tore up, you know. But uh, at that time, I was eating breakfast, and we had gone down to take our clothes to the laundry to be laundered, and we were eating breakfast, and this lady wore glasses, and a lovely minister, and when she wanted to emphasize a point, she'd look at you right out over the top of her glasses. She said, lay your fork down, we're going home because it just started raining rocks. And I said, well, I'm not through eating. She said, I don't care, you lay your fork down, we're going home. And we got in the house and I thought, well, that wind sounds so strange today. I said, what in the world's the matter with the wind? I never heard a wind like that. And Brother uh, Hall and her were standing there looking at me to see if I was going to crawl back under the bed. And uh, I turned around and I said, Brother Hall, did you? And I look, he's looking at me strange, you know. And, and I said, you mean it's one of them things? You know, one of those things. And uh, uh, just a mile and a half from us, it blew the house completely away. And then I looked out the door and the old telephone pole was just laying right out there, you know. But it tore up and, and I saw after that storm was over, a tractor that had been absolutely twisted in two like you had wrung out a washcloth, you know. And that devilish thing tore that place up. Why, listen, it didn't hurt our place, but I'm going to tell you for a little bit, I was shook. I was shook. I didn't have the fire on me at that time. And I'm going to tell you, that scared me. <laughs> but you see, now we're living in a time where God said, I'll give you power over the elements. I'll give you power to where you can speak to the rain. Joshua did, and the rain obeyed him. He, Joshua, uh, I mean Elijah, and Joshua spoke to the sun, and the moon stood still, and they obeyed him. And he told Adam, have dominion and be boss. Anytime you're boss over something, you bring it in subjection, don't you? So here's a strong people coming forth. And some of you that are watching are really liking what you're hearing. And on the other hand, there's some of you that are very angry. And you're probably going to turn your TV off. But I'm going to tell you something. You're going to get on your bed and you're not going to forget what you heard. Because we're going to preach to you all night long if we have to. Amen. To get you clothed in Jesus so you won't be destroyed. Because we love you. And we're getting this message to you. So you as God's people can take it to your area where you are. We've got a big job to do people. And as we get this down upon us. Here you're going to see. Arise and shine. For thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon thee. It shall arise upon thee. And be seen upon thee and nations that knew you not shall run to you because the Lord has shined upon you. Now this is not just individuals. This is a body of people the Lord's raising up that are going to rise with the glory of God down upon them. They're going to shine forth and even now while you're getting this healing substance on you there's a sheen that gets on the skin. You can watch the people when the healing fire gets on them. They'll begin to shine. You'll see a light on their forehead. In a, uh, one of the meetings I imparted the healing substance on a little four year old girl. And that little girl today, when I got the picture back, it looked just like I had put a light right in the center of her forehead. She said, Sister Hall, can't I sing? I said, why, sure you can sing, but I want to know what you're going to sing before I put you up there. And she said, I want to sing my Sunday school song. So I thought, well, that'd be all right. And she didn't want to oversleep on Sunday so she could get to church on time to be clothed in the wonderful power of God. So this is good for the children. And it's good for the adults. It's good for babies. Parents that are having children, once they get the healing fire upon them, 
they're having babies without pain, no birth pains, and then they're not having a bunch of children that are crying all the time. But it's a new generation being born in our day. It was a new generation in their time. The children that were born in the wilderness that were taken into the land of promise. So you see, as we impart this to you, you can feel this tangible substance come right down upon you and remain as you begin to work with it. Some of you are already feeling it. Some of you are feeling a tingling in your feet and a quickening power is getting on you. Some of you may feel a cool breeze coming on you. It's still the healing fire. You know, uh, the Lord said, I want you either hot or cold, but don't be lukewarm. And those lukewarm churches was the ones he was pointing at. And the overcomers that came out of that to get in the greater things are the ones that's making up this eighth church that the Lord is forming for this last day to work through. All the walls have to come down. All the walls of these barriers and denominations, they all have to come down. There is only one church, and that's in the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of the walls have been separation to God's people. One teaches a doctrine this way, one teaches it that way. But we all have to begin to teach what the Lord said, what the Spirit is telling the churches in these last days. He is now glory body. All of man tradition has to come to a halt because the Lord said, I'll give you a new conversation. The old conversation will vanish. We're getting new words, and that brings new thoughts to our mind, which causes new reactions to our physical body. And you have what you say, not what you pray. You've been praying for years, people, and you're still getting in the same place. You're getting nowhere. You're still in the same place where you were. So let's look up today with our gates open. You know, it says go through the gates. Go through the gates. What gate? The eye gate, nose gate, mouth gate, mind gate, ear gate. Go through the gates is what it says. And lift the standard and show my people their transgression. And get them to where they're looking up where the thing comes from. Where does it come from? But the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where your blessings come from. It's from above. Not below, from above. Why would you want to go and say, Oh Lord, oh Lord, come upon. Why well, you can't even see if he would bring it down in the cloven tongues. You couldn't see it. When you go to your friends, you look them in the eye while you talk to them. And you shake hands with them, you feel them. And you feel the warmth of their body. And you're close enough to them that you even smell them, whether good or bad. So the Lord wants us to smell good. He wants us to look good. He wants us to be good. He wants us to talk good. He wants us to see good and hear good and know good and know what pleases the Father. So let's lift our gates right now. Some of you are already feeling it. And those of you that are angry because of what you're hearing and you think it's a big bunch of baloney, you just keep on listening. You just keep on reading your Bible. You go to the consultant where it came from and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He will not deceive you. He will not lead you astray, but he's going to guide you into all truth. And anytime you're getting rid of sickness forever, that's truth. Anytime you get rid of headaches forever, that's truth. And he wants you to have this right now. Will you lift your hands? Have faith. Believe God. Doubt your doubts. Don't look what I say. You do what Jesus said. That's what we're trying to tell you is what the Lord said. Do what he says, not what man tells you. And if you go ask your pastor, if he knew about this, he'd be preaching it. So go to Jesus. He's the best pastor of all, you know, because he'll teach you the right way. Many of us have followed the wrong way because we followed what man said. Now, let's look up because he's here right now. And Lord, for this people that are watching, that have tuned in for the first time, oh, let their home become a brand new place. Hallelujah. Bring the substance tangibly into every room in that house. And you know this is a house. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost, the habitation of God. And bring, bring this tangibly into every room in the house that they will not only see the cloven tongues and feel the healing heat come upon them, but that the wind will even come in their place with a cool breeze and cool every room in that place because we are living in a time of heat, aren't we? And the healing heat of the healing substance from above can cool you as well as warm you in the wintertime. So you see, you have an automatic, automatic in the Lord. Heat in the winter when the snow is on the ground. When it's real cold and you'll feel this tangibly come down upon you. And then when it's real hot in the summer, he'll be the cool breeze to cool you. We're going to look up, as I told you, and we're going to clap our hands three times 
and shout Christ the Hallelujah Night. All right? One, two, three. Christ the Hallelujah Night. And that's one of the new words that the Holy Ghost is giving. Christ the Hallelujah. He's the anointed one of God. Hallelujah means praise the Lord. And we are told to put on the armor of light. So if you are a Christian, that means Christ-like. And he is in light. He dwells in light. So we have to walk in the light as he is in the light. Then we will have fellowship one with another. And you know, I understand fellowship is two people in the same ship that can shake hands with one another. All right? How many feel that healing heat coming upon you? Why, yes, just talking about it. Now, the people in the audience are feeling this. I know some of you that are watching for the first time are beginning to feel. And if you don't, you just be patient. It's already been imparted. And you may turn around to get a drink of water after this goes off and all of a sudden feel that healing heat go all over your body. Thank the Lord and praise him for it when that comes because that little bit will eventually spread all over your body. You know, as you can have a chicken that you have plucked the feathers from, and in the olden days, you had to hold that over an open fire and singe all of those little hair-like feathers off of it. It was far from being roasted. It was far from being ready to eat, but it had fire all over it. Listen, you can have the Holy Ghost healing fire all over your body and only have a singe. So don't think just because you feel a little heat in your feet, you're clothed. So this is an experience, tangibly, that you can feel, receive, and keep forever. And praise God. Let's give glory to Jesus. Can we shout hallelujah? Hallelujah! God bless you. And thank you, Sister Hall. Wasn't that beautiful? And while the music continues from the orchestra, I'd like to sum up Sister Hall's message just a little bit. She gave you a reference about the two witnesses in the 11th chapter of Revelation. Now it tells you that they were clothed with sackcloth, but they had trouble. They were killed. But it took the army of the beast to come against them to kill them. Now the two witnesses were a very powerful group of people. They were emerging just before the sun-clothed woman came forth. They were born from the sun-clothed woman before she had her full sun clothing. Now a second group of people called the sun-clothed people, they were clothed, this sun-clothed church was clothed with the sun. And then we have another group of people, the man-child, given birth to after the mother had the garments of the sun. One group was not properly clothed. clothed. Another group, the sun clothed people, were properly clothed and she could not be hurt. She was not sick, she was not tired, and she gave birth to the man-child. Another group of people, and the man-child are the overcomers and the sun clothed woman also is the overcomers. The sun clothed woman is one aspect of the overcomers or the eighth church of Revelation. The man-child also was a group of overcomers, the white raiment people too. They were clothed with the white raiment. And did you know that the white raiment in Revelation is mentioned more in that book than any other book? And the white raiment clothed people, they never got sick. You have no record of them ever getting sick. No accidents, no injuries, no harm. So Sister Hall was giving you something really wonderful here today. And how many of you folks that cooperated with Sister Hall are right now feeling this wonderful blessing? All right, isn't that wonderful? You're feeling this healing heat coming upon your body. So therefore, we can have more than just one verse of experiences such as Acts 2-4. There's 47 verses of beautiful experiences in the second chapter of Acts. 
47 verses, not one, not just two, four. Have you had the experience of Acts 2, 2, 2, 3? Have you had the experiences going way on down to Acts 2, 17, 2, 18, 2, 19, 2, 46, 2, 47? So reread the Pentecostal chapter. Reread the second chapter of Joel. Reread the 60th chapter of Isaiah. Reread the 51st chapter of Jeremiah and also the some of the Psalms and you will find there's so much more for us now we would like to give you an invitation to write to us we want you to write a letter to our address that will be given at the close of this telecast and if you would do that we'll send you some special literature on this ministry you can have it right in your home sit down and read it and get the scripture after scripture and you will see that there's more for you what we're here for is to help you to have much more than you have ever had in all of your life and you can have the fullness of the baptism with the holy ghost and with fire there's a song in my heart May we express our appreciation as we thank you for joining us today. We trust that our program today has been an inspiration to you and your life with Christ. Please write to us at the Franklin Hall Healing Ministries, Post Office Box 9910, Phoenix, Arizona 85068. And we will gladly send you our free catalog of tracks and cassette tapes. Once again, our mailing address is Franklin Hall Healing Ministries, Post Office Box 9910, Phoenix, Arizona 85068. Don't forget, tune in next week. And make it live up.